Um, today, as promised from yesterday, I said that I was going to talk about City of Joy. Um, that was the documentary that I watched the other day. I watched it twice, actually. And it was so, so very good. Um, it talks about, like, I'm, I'm going to talk about a lot of very deep stuff here. I have a little notebook of notes that I took from this documentary because I really wanted this to be more of an educational kind of video and I find like social media is so good for sharing and bringing awareness to a lot of really important issues that are going on around the world and when I did a poll the other day you guys said hey I'd love to hear more about human rights issues and so that is what I'm bringing to you today. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to post this video. I don't know if I'm going to yeah, well, I'll figure that out after, but to begin, I'm drinking tea. It's cream of gray. This is my absolute favorite tea at David's. Um, you can get this tea anywhere. <laughs> it's pretty common tea, but cream of gray from David's is very good, you guys. Like, it's a pretty one, too. Yeah, very pretty. It's a black tea, blue cornflower petals in there. It's nice. It's a good one. Very flavorful, very creamy, vanilla kind of flavoring. So, shout out to David's no promotion nothing going on here I don't work for them anymore I'm just sharing my tea um, <laughs> but city of joy we're going to really get into that now so you might be wondering what is city of joy and why am I so interested in learning about city of joy so basically city of joy is this little I honestly I want to say a city but what it really is it's like an, not okay I was gonna say the word enclosure that's not the right word for it but it's this area in Bukavu in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and it's it has closed gates it's totally protected and any woman who has been sexually violated even children they can all go to this area in Bukavu and they can um, learn how to be integrated back into society um, following their trauma. A lot of times the women who go into City of Joy, they are feeling very worthless. They were just, you know, sexually assaulted sometimes more than once. Um, they were, you know, some of them held captive. Some of them gave birth to children from their, um, like, rapist. And it's just, it's... It's pretty awful. Um, they have a surgery center, the Pansy Hospital, inside City of Joy, and who works there is a lot of different staff, doctors, and the main doctor, an activist, and co-founder of City of Joy, Dennis McQuakey. So he works there, and he does surgery on all of the women at this center. So. Um, yes, I believe the program City of Joy because there's it's like a healing kind of thing. They learn self-defense These women they are empowered at this place and they just feel Like like they learn how to be happy again. Hence the title City of Joy. They really kind of learn that you know just because, well not just because they were sexually assaulted, but you know, following their trauma, following their sexual assault, following, you know, the genocide that they witnessed and all of the, you know, mass killings that take place in their village, um, they learn that their life's not over and that they have a chance to be happy again and they grow as a person, they become stronger at City of Joy. So that's basically the description of what City of Joy is. Um, what I learned from watching the documentary so much, but they have about 40,000 women, I think, per year go through City of Joy. And um, the whole point of City of Joy is to let them like learn and grow and learn all these new ways of you know, integrating back into society and kind of teaching them like, what do you want to get out of City of Joy? You know, how do you want to, you know, become a better person? What do you need to do to feel happy? Like they, you know, they teach them all these things, but at the end of their time at City of Joy, they graduate. So it said at the end of the video that 180 women graduate from City of Joy each year, which I thought was magnificent. Just, it, it was so, so happy. And they also kind of showed at the end of the documentary clips of, I think it was maybe about five different women who shared their story throughout the film, but also um, what they're doing now. And so it was just, it was really interesting to 
follow these particular women's stories throughout the film and at the end it kind of shows like you know what they're doing now so I I really love that um, what do I have for notes here so a little bit of background story about Bukavu Democratic Republic of the Congo um, in 1996 there the war began and this is really what you know the the very stem of why all these sexual assaults are happening today in the Congo um, so what ended up happening is in 1996 the war in the Congo began and um, it really I mean I don't I'm not too educated on it I'm still definitely learning but I believe it really started from conflict minerals so in the Congo they have these conflict minerals and they have Colton there is tin these are used for our iPhones our computers um, they're using jewelry cars all these conflict mineral minerals they're used all over the world and they are transported from many different companies some of these companies that use Colton actually a lot of companies use Colton because it's used in a lot of different technology so some of the companies are LG there's Samsung Lenovo Toshiba um, I know Apple is also using it so again we use these products every single day and I got thinking about this at what cost right when we buy an iPhone we're not really thinking about what goes into that iPhone or when we buy a computer or even a TV we're not really thinking hey you know what there's Colton in this and guess what happens in the Congo six million people are murdered because they the conflict minerals right and um, I think it said in the documentary that hundreds hundreds of thousands of women are raped daily and like since the commencement of this war in 1996 that's how many like hundreds hundreds and hundreds of thousands and it's just like it you know if we all knew those statistics before purchasing our computer and our iPhones and any jewelry for you know wedding rings or anything like that how many um, people would be saved right or you know would this war have ended years ago and they um they said another interesting point in the video as well um in i believe it's bosnia there was a war i think oh god i can't remember the year but bosnia is in europe and that war began i think 20,000 to 40,000 people were killed i'm not sure why i haven't done that much research on it um, but because it was in Europe, people were so quick to act on it. They're like, oh my gosh, there's this war going on. We have to end it. We have to figure out how to solve this. But then you compare that war to what's going on in the Congo, and there's six million people have been killed. And it's, it's 2018, and that started in 1996. Yeah. And how many people know that there's a war going on in the Congo? How many people have educated themselves on why that's happening? I don't think a lot of you guys watching really know much about it. So, and up until like, I would say up until about two years ago, I didn't even know that was happening. Like I've really dug into this and um, been researching about it because I am just fascinated with conflict minerals and I want to end that. Like I really want to be an advocate for the people in the Congo, for the women who've been sexually assaulted, the children as well, for the you know families that are separated and the people who are murdered, the genocides, everything in Rwanda and in the Congo. I really, really want to talk more about those ideas. So that's why I'm creating this video to hopefully help you guys understand what is going on there. Um, so back to why this really all began. Um, Conflict minerals, they have these mines and the soldiers, typically little boys, they grow up, they are raised through their families. And what are these little boys learning? There's men who are constantly raping the women. They don't learn respect. They don't learn how to respect their moms, their sisters. Um, none of the kids do. The whole, it, it literally disrupts the entire social system in the Congo when you have kids being raised and they're not learning proper family structures. There's no structure, okay? They're living in poverty to begin with. There's no family structure. They're not learning, you know, things that people in the West would learn about being kind or 
just social cues that you just wouldn't say or do to somebody else, right? You just wouldn't think of picking up a machete one day because someone stole your food. Like that, we just don't have those issues here, but they are very um, prevalent in the Congo, right? So we have all these kids growing up and learning all these terrible, terrible massacres. And the kids, because they're living in poverty, they also grow up and they learn that killing is okay and they see that all the time they don't learn respect and because they're living in poverty they have nothing to lose like that's the mindset when you grow up and you're you know in your teens or in your 20s there they just there's nothing to lose and their job is through the militia okay that's what they grow up and they need money to have food on their table and so companies from Belgium Canada Germany um, the US there's literally like I think Pakistan was one of them Afghanistan like there's like all over the world there was about 20 I think countries listed in that documentary I don't have all the memorized but all these companies are wanting the conflict minerals and so what they're doing is they're taking their planes their helicopters everything over to the Congo they're exploiting these natural resources and because like you know let's say people from Canada they don't know the forests in the Congo they don't know where to get these conflict minerals so they hire the militia in the Congo and they say okay I want this group of men to go out find these conflict minerals Bring them back to us we'll pay you and so the militia will go to the mines there's many different mines in the congo and because they want those minerals and they're typically around villages so that what they do is they go into the village and they have their machine guns and they use machine guns and they use rape as weapons to take over that village near the mine so they can mine for the conflict minerals right and it's just it blows up from there so you have people countries from all over the world coming in hiring these militias the militias going to the mines using machine guns and rape as weapons raping the women because the people in the village don't want to be raped and murdered and they're scared they will flee to the next village and then eventually I said in the documentary all these people were ending up in Bukavu and normally people would get their money from the land, right? They would cultivate their land, they would have farming, crops, all of that stuff. The soil in Bukavu and really in the Congo is very rich, so they were able to harvest a lot of goods, right, for food to get money. And so because these, like the militia are coming into the mines and taking over their villages where they would cultivate their land, the people are fleeing. So now they no longer have a way to make money. They no longer have their house, their family is separated, um, many of their family members were killed, their children, the women raped, and they're just, they're out of all of their property. So now we have a huge amount of people, like a million or so maybe even more all living in this area um, and they're all living in poverty because they all had to flee and so it's very upsetting it's very disrupt disruptive people's lives are ruined it's awful and so that is happening every single day in the Congo and it's just crazy and then and then it's like it creates even more problems because you're, you're not only dealing with sexual assault victims but you're dealing with famine you're dealing with you know sexually transmitted diseases spreading like it just it gets into a whole other scheme of things and it just like everything explodes everything explodes and so I think it honestly does stem from the conflict mineral because that's honestly what started this war and who is to blame for that who is to blame like it's it's awful I think like one of the women in the video I think her name is Jane she said that it's the Democratic Republic the Congo president he's not doing anything about the war and it's us because we are aware like this has been going on for years some of us are not aware because we just don't know but many of us are aware that this is happening in Africa and what is happening about it, right? Um, Dennis, Dr. Dennis McQuaige, he even went to the United Nations. He does lots of meetings there. He recently just won a Nobel Peace Prize for his work and they just got a whole bunch of funding 
which is honestly so 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 good um, to help you know with the surgeries and t to bring in more women into City of Joy but um, he has gone to the United Nations and he has voiced these concerns many times I think in the video he was there in 2012 and he said that hey guys like this is still going on what are what are we gonna do about it right and he said he was deeply disappointed and I can see why I can see why he definitely they need more help they need to really raise more awareness it is getting out now for sure especially after winning the Nobel Peace Prize and just smaller advocates all around talking about this issue I've seen many articles about um, City of well not more so City of Joy but I have written one about Darcy Adam and he has a program make music matter where he goes to the Congo Rwanda um, I know he's opening up more uh, music studios in Turkey and I believe Iraq and he is being music and helping any kind of woman or child come to his Make Music Matter organization and they can sing through their pain. So he's doing that, so that's raised a lot of awareness. He's um, kind of partnered with Dr. Dennis McQuaige to help these women. So that is something that's very good. Um, but yeah, slowly we are seeing this kind of come up more in the media and I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really awesome. It definitely needs more attention. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I really wanted to talk about. There was so many stories of the women that were, they shared their stories in the film. Oh my god, I worded that really weird. Um, but devastating. I really encourage you guys to watch City of Joy. You, it, it hits you right in the heart. It really does. Um, there's Talizo, her story was very sad. She's probably the same age as me, maybe a little older now. Um, but she was taken from her home. She had to go to these camps and in the camp she was there for two weeks and she was raped day and night and she had a baby after that and then she went to the Pansy Hospital. Um, another woman, Jane, she is just love and light in this documentary. Her story is horrendous. She's been, she's graduated from City of Joy now, but she was there for about, I think it's been six to seven years she was there. Um, just rehabilitating and her story is just it's one of the saddest in the film but one thing I do like what they said is that a lot of the women in this film would come to the hospital and they would want to share their story and that was the point like they you know in order to heal they wanted everyone to feel comfortable enough to share this story and I think it was Talizo she said you know what I don't like sharing my story because I feel like everyone has a worse experience. And then Dr. Dennis McQuaigie was like, nope, it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, it matters what you've gone through, but it's, nobody's experience is better or worse than the other person's. You guys are all equal, you're all here together, you're all here to heal and to grow. And so I liked what he had to say. And there was other characters um, people in the film too that were just very encouraging. There's Eve. Um, she is, I don't, is she American? I'm not really sure if she's American or not, but she is at the Pansy Hospital there helping. She's an advocate. And then there was also Christine in the video. She is um, from the Congo and she was also um, a co-founder of City of Joy. So um, they had a lot of really inspirational things to say very empowering for the woman there and I wrote down a couple of their quotes because I was just like this is so important and I feel like I want to write an article about this um, but yeah Eve I have a quote here from her she said to be a good leader you have to be a good storyteller and the more honest you are able to be the more you will allow other people to be honest because when you hear someone with your shared experience you feel safe you feel like someone knows you so again, talking about, you know, being able to be vulnerable and share your story with people. I'm trying to do that more and I think that's really important. I think that's something we can all, you know, take away. And then she even said, when we tell the truth, we break the silence, we change the world, right? So even just that quote, you know, when you break the silence and you're talking about really important issues, you change the world. The last little thing that I want to say here, this is from 
a quote from Dennis McQuaige, and I think I'm gonna end it on this note because it's a very good point. He said, the concept of City of Joy is to transform pain into strength that these girls who've suffered so much become leaders of their communities. It will take time, but we believe in this. We must stop this. Stop the violence as a tactic of war. Stop the savage rape that is destroying our society, that is destroying us. It's impossible. It's unacceptable. It's unimaginable. Right? So, again, we need to end this. And that is all I have to say today thank you guys for tuning in I hope you guys honestly took something away from this I hope you all go watch City of Joy documentary it's on Netflix please educate yourselves much further than this video it is such an important prevalent issue occurring and not only please like the Congo but really surrounding areas okay thank you guys for tuning in